Hi guys and welcome to the Blues Focus podcast. I'm here with Tommy again. All right, mate. How are you doing? Good. Yeah. Good. 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 Just you know, stressful, stressful game on Saturday, but a point away at top of the league is always a lovely way, lovely way to get going, isn't it? Yeah, definitely, absolutely. <laughs> so yeah, today we'll talk a little bit about Sheffield. You mm-hmm. know how we perform, play. You know, point away, like I said, top of the league, fantastic. We'll review Middlesbrough. We've just sat Chris Wilder, and then we'll look at Bristol at home a little bit as well. We'll talk about the idea of three games in seven days as well, and how the squad's going to hopefully mm. hold out. But yeah, I'll hand it over to you, Tommy, for a start. How did you think we did? Well, I think I was surprised about how bad Sheffield United were. Really. Well, not bad as such, because we didn't beat them. But, you know, I was expecting more for a team that was top of the league, really. You know, they obviously looks pretty good against the teams that I've seen on the telly this this season. Um, they look very physical. But I don't know whether they just had an off game or whatever, but they just didn't seem like any threat at all, really. I expected like this tough opposition that you do get when you face top of the league. Like, when we played Fulham last season, it was like, it wasn't like if we were going to win. It was like, how much are we going to lose by? Like, you know, it was absolutely... You just knew that we were going to lose and think, right, well, how many goals could we get? Maybe just get a couple, which, you know, we did last season. But, you know, we've done well against teams towards the top of the, top of the league already this season, though, like Norwich and Watford. Um, and even, like, playing teams who made the playoffs last season against Huddersfield, we beat them, we drew with Luton, and we've drew with Sheffield United again this season. So, you know, they, it's been good, really, the teams against the top of the table. Um, but, yeah, it was odd. It was like... Um, it was a quiet atmosphere as well. I think, I think Sheffield United fans were probably expecting to beat us as well. Um, and they did take the lead, but it wasn't convincing after they did take the lead. But obviously, yeah. we equalised pretty quickly afterwards as well. So, I think, yeah, I, I'm glad with the points. But it was strange. It was a bit of a difficult game to sort of predict in, at times. It was like, is it going to end boringly nil nil, or is it suddenly going to go towards Sheffield United's way? But um, I think either team could have won it towards the end because it was a few chances um, mm. for each team. I think, realistically, though, if you're a Sheffield United fan, you'd be very upset with that performance, really. You'd be a bit worried going into the next few games, thinking, you know, if we're going to be performing like that from this point, you know, what's the season going to look like? But I think for us, you know, going into the game against Middlesbrough, you know, we should be favouring ourselves. We should be looking at that team and thinking, yeah, we're looking pretty decent, actually. Um, but obviously, with this being blows and Chris Wilder just being sacked, you know, all the favor, all the odds are in our favor. We're going to lose three nil now. We never ever do well when the odds are in our favor. Like, <laughs> but we did, we did it in every league we're in. But when we were in the Prem back in the day, when we we're in the Championship, we do it all the time as Birmingham City, don't we? Against the mm. teams in the upper end of the table, where you're unexpected to do anything, performance comes out of nowhere, and you do really well. Against your Wigan Athletic at home, when you're down to 10 men for 80 minutes, <laughs> you lose 1 0. Like, it is so Obviously. Birmingham City, and it's the most frustrating part about being our fan base. In terms of Chef, I thought they weren't ready in terms of they didn't expect us to play how we did. We constricted them to you know a couple of long range chances, and they got in beyond once or twice, but them three at the back, I thought, were solid as a rock. Ruddy did a great job. Their goal. First of all, I am firmly believing that that weren't a free kick. I think that was soft as anything. But the goal itself, I can't argue that you could have had yeah. two kicks in the goal and that was just unstoppable from McBurner. Yeah, no, I think the goal was well taken. You know, that shows that he's a top striker, really. Um, despite the fact he's a bit of a bell. Um, you know, yeah, but... he, he was being a bit of a knobhead, weren't he? It was a bit of a feisty game in cer- in certain parts, you know. There was the, the, it's like the first half was very tame, really. I don't think there was much in it in anything, really. But um, as soon as the second half got going, I think you know a couple of challenges started flying in, a few um, a few nasty challenges from Sheffield United, and there was a few late challenges from us as well. And then that's what started to turn the game a little bit. But um, I was just frustrated really by the inconsistency of the refereeing really because there was a certain points where they would let the game run. Then there were certain points where like Longello in the first half and Hannibal in the second half would get books for like challenges that were like not even, they were like tactical fouls really. So like why they were booking it was just losing the flow of the game and it was just making everybody getting frustrated then. And Particularly the, the Hannibal one. 
yeah, like there is a genuine attempt to get the ball, like with yeah. both of them. However, absolutely, yeah. especially, and I'm going to bring this one up, Bogle at the end of the game, I think it's Bogle, mm. I think he's right, the wing back. Yeah, he took Bielik out from behind when Bielik's running clear through in the middle of the park, like, and he's got loads of space. How that is in a red card from behind, no attempt to get to the ball. And there was a couple like tackles where you're looking at the ref going, oh, like, how is that not a red line? As I said, I've seen, I saw Ryan was get sent off last season away at Cobb, and he, he genuinely went for the ball and slight missed time, straight red. Like, it's immediately so what I thought, yeah. Yeah, like, yeah. It's the inconsistency in football, though, isn't it? Like, yeah. And we moan about it, and I know we're famous for bitching about referees, but we do seem to get some absolute shit out of when it comes to referees. I'm sorry to say it, but some of the yeah. decisions we get is an absolute joke at times. I don't understand it. There's like different rules for different clubs it seems like when it comes to us it just feels like if there's a genuinely bad challenge we just won't get a red card for it and, and the one we just... did got appealed and Yuki got a free match back <laughs> yeah <laughs> <laughs> honestly I mean that was a definite yeah. dive though from June at the time when I watched it live when I was watching on the TV though because I had work I was like he's talking him out his last match yeah. and then when I was the replay I was like oh my god he's actually just fully the yeah, FL had definitely missed shaft us the Wigan oh, fans absolutely went to town on me for that, though, because like I, I, I did the same thing at the time. I thought it was a definite red, which obviously you can't tell when you're at the game because when oh, you're yeah. in the stands from far away, when somebody goes down, you obviously think it's a foul anyway. But I thought it was a definite foul, and obviously the last man red card, and I was like, yeah, we deserve that. And then obviously looking back on the highlights, you're just like, oh god, it just wasn't though, was it? I got all these Wigan fans saying, no, nah, oh, that's. Fire. No, that's not right. That is. <laughs> Honestly. Speaking of bitter fans, Jesus wept. <laughs> like, how many Sheffield United fans have developed tears over Twitter, man? Like, I can't deal with it. Anti football. I mean, I'm not being funny, but if anyone in the first 45 minutes of that game was anti football, it was them. Mm. I don't know. Much, like... Yeah. But where they got that anti football thing from, I've no idea, really, because, like, we were, you know, just solid really at the back really we weren't letting things through they had a couple of chances that slipped through maybe but you know it was it was i don't know where they thought anti-football came through maybe because it was just a bit of a boring half maybe or something but, but that's anti -football. what you do we're away at top of the league what are we expecting us to go balls to the wall with four four two yeah like... we were just we we're just being defensive you know and that's not ridiculous you know we were if we were being anti-football we would have been taking everybody out every 10 seconds Diving, looking for fouls, time wasting, booting the ball forward, yeah. elbowing everybody in the long, box. Long ball to Troy up top. That's all anti. That's what it would have been. Yeah, you would have had ten men, nine men back and just Troy up top, trying to chest yeah. the ball down and flick it. Mm. We, we, we weren't doing we that at all. Great. I liked some of the football we played. I liked how quick and sharp we looked. Mm. You know, you could see some players were getting a bit leggy. You know, but. I liked it. I genuinely, like you said, it, it could have gone either way and I thought they were for the taking towards the end of the game. Mm. If no, I have one yeah. critique and one very slight critique, and I love Jordan Graham more than anything. I think he's such a classy player, but I think mm. his delivery, for the first time I'm going to say in a Birmingham show, his delivery was off on Saturday. Yeah. There was a couple I... of deliveries where I was like, oh, come on, not like you. Yeah, I'm, I'm not the biggest fan of Jordan Graham. I, I like him as a person. He's a top bloke. But um, as a footballer, I think his technique really is what lets him down. I think his work rate, again, like everybody at the Blues is seconds and only. You can see that he puts in hard efforts and everything. But, you know, uh, there's been a couple of times this season and last season where there's just been, I don't know, whether it's just like, just you can't seem to cross a ball properly. Like, I don't think there's anything else other than saying that, you know, he can't do it really. Because, he, get, he gets the ball and any other player would just put it straight into the box, but it's either too short or too far away for me. So. That's what's frustrating because he has the ability somewhere in there because look at the ball to Maxine against Preston. Like, you can see he can mm. deliver a great ball, but then yeah, like, I don't true, know yeah. what it, unless it was fatigue or he just... I don't know. Like, he might have been exhausted, to be fair, because Chef were trying to push wing play weren't there a lot against us, I noticed. I wonder whether he needs to have like... Um, you know, some fresh ideas coming through him because there was times where he looked like whatever he was doing just looked a bit too predictable, really. Yeah. So we'd get the ball out on the wide areas and he'd always look to go for the cross, but then he'd either get blocked or it would be so predictable there'd already be a player on the front post to it away. So I just wonder whether he needs to work with like a fullback or 
one of the midfielders to work something up first to give it like a quick one two and then the cross or maybe like a feint to go back and then back the other way and then cross the ball or something like that because whatever he's doing at the moment yeah or something just you know a bit of differences a bit creative difference because every cross that he did in that game you can see it on the highlights is that it's all pretty much the same cross every single time and everybody's uh, the Sheffield United defenders are there just to clean up immediately so they're I, I think up that's and the in goals, just chilling, and he's just running yeah. out and catching every set piece that was going in the box. Mm. Yeah, but, it's true. Yeah, like you said, like game was definitely for the taking. Um, I know you're happy with it. I was ecstatic. Troy finally got his goal. Mm. I think his work rate deserved it. Like we were screaming about last week, he got in the box, Tommy. He, got he did, in the, yes, got yeah. In the box. It's weird. He must have been watching the podcast. Yeah. Um, <laughs> It was odd, really, because what we were talking about seemed to appear a lot in the game. It was odd, you know, Troy being in the on the last man for a long time and then actually appearing in the box, like you say, and then putting it in the back of the net. So, but I said as well, um, if there's a one-on-one situation, he will he score. Missing. Yeah, and, and he, he weren't missing that. He absolutely thundered that, yeah. didn't he? He weren't, he weren't <laughs> playing catches that. He controlled it, just went, nah, this is yeah, going in. Bang. Like, Keeper gets down to that, he's broke his wrist, man. That was that was pure power on that. Yeah. But it was good. I think, like, yeah, yeah. It was, it, it was definitely good for his confidence. Yeah. This I thought if he missed that, I'd be like, oh, this is really gonna be a proper telltale sign, really, of like the type of player he is now. But it's good to see that he did score because, you know, we've got two strikers who in and around the box can score now. They've got goals in them. I think that is the fortunate sign for us because we keep we keep Troy and Scott Hogan up front leave them in the box and then we get Bakuna, Chong and Bielik to do all the dirty work around the defence yeah. uh, attacking and defensive midfield and then the back four or the back five they just sweep up everything because yeah. Trusty is so tidy you know he's, he does, nobody wow. gets past him same for Sanderson uh, Maxine Collin can do anything at the back. He can play at the centre back. He can play right back. He can play left Maxine back. Maxine Collin, I know they would never play there, but he looks like he's got the quality to play centre mid if you ever needed, like as a sweeper. Oh, yeah. Like, yeah, he, he could play he, anywhere. The game against Huddersfield this season at home, it was the first time I, I properly watched him because he was running down the side. I was there mm. watching. And I was just, I said to my brother, I was like, like Maxine's a baller, you know? Like, he can he's play wicked, baller. yeah. He can. Like I've always known him as a solid. Like I've always known him as Mister Consistent for me. Like he's always that solid, gives it, knows what he's doing. But when I was watching bombing for the other field, I was like, oh, "This kid, this guy can play." Like, what, yeah, he's like, wicked. Yeah, <laughs> I think he's always been that type of player who. It, I think he, my dad says this a lot. He says if you put him in a proper good team, you see how good of a player he is, really. And I agree with him because it's like, I, th- I think he's been put into some bad teams over the years. You know, oh, with that Karanka team and the the Boya team to an extent and um, the Red Nap team when he first came in, you know, he's had to play a left-back where he's not most comfortable. And it, and even now when he's playing at centre-back or in that sort of weird five role where he's switching over between centre-back and whatever. But, you know, you, when he plays with quality players like Jota when he came in, you know, he, he just worked with him perfectly because they're just, they're just intertwined, really. Like, they give the ball to each other every single time. They'd always be there for as an option. And that's why it kind of annoys me. And I was saying this in the vlog, you know, we need to start playing a four at the back, even though what we've got at the moment isn't broke and we shouldn't fix what ain't broke. You know, it's kind of like, yeah, but like we could you don't, win, you don't we could win that fix, game. You don't have to fix what's broke. The issue you mm. got is you just have to move Jordan Graham up to right mid, move that back yeah. four, and now your back four is solid. You just put deploy Chong, Chong as a left mid. You've got yeah, a four exactly. four two there. Like, you he don't is... have to move anyone out of the pitch. You don't have to change the winning team. You could just change the yeah. formula a little bit. Yeah, no, that is true, actually. I did think of that. I think it's a good point to put, uh, to bring up, actually, because I, I, don't, I don't know whether... I'm trying to think of this formation now because we probably haven't got the players to play. But as a 4-3-3, three, three, we've got the back four and the midfield three sorted. It's just the sort of the attacking three. Like, how do we play that then? Is it like... He's got his Hogan and Troy at the minute. Are yeah. To like Hogan's played on the wing before, but he hates. You know, you can see he's not. Yeah. He's not Doesn't enjoyable. Really, on the wing. No. You could push Graham and Chong as a front three, but who starts Troy or Hogan? Do you want the hold up play of Troy? You're probably doing that formation because he'll bring both players into it. But why mm. do you drop your top goal scorer in Scott Hogan? 
Yeah, it's the formation I'd like to play, but at the moment it doesn't work. So, you know, I think I'd say a four, I'd say a four, a four, four, two diamonds probably is the formation I'd like to play at the moment. But even then, with Jordan Graham playing the right wing, uh, right mid, I don't know particularly about that one. Uh, yeah. But obviously, Eustace knows the best. You know, he works with the players every day. He works with Troy. He works with everybody. And I think can't fault him. Like. No, he's been fantastic, really. And you know, getting a good bit of out of those players. You know, we look like a good team again. You know, with with Boya last season, I thought we had some good players individually with Taylor and Hernandez, but something wasn't. You know, something wasn't working between each other. And I heard from a few people um, saying that Boya did lose the dressing room in the end. I don't so know how I was, true it is. Have you seen about... Did you see Hogan's interview about Boya? Was it the one after the uh, Huddersfield game? Yeah, was it some, where he said something about, mm. I only scored when I stopped listening to what he told me to do or something? Yeah, that was weird. That was. I, 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 was like, I can oh, imagine gosh. that he wasn't very happy with it um, because obviously Boya probably would expect more from him as a, you know, at least a 10 goal of season championship player. But, you know, I... I, I I obviously love Boya for being in the champion, uh, being in that Carlin Cup team. Of course. But just, I don't know whether he had it as a coach. And I think with Eustace, he obviously does because he get, he's starting to get things out of the same sort of team that uh, Boya had. You know, he had Sanderson last season. He had uh, Chong last season and Bakuna as well. So he's pretty much the same team. So he is getting the best out of them now. And he's like, he's, he's drawing against the good teams. He's starting to get points against those good teams. Um, and I'm I not think saying the... Bowyer didn't have it, but 100% Eustace seems to have that belief in his team where every player works the balls off. Yeah. And Bowie had it for a lot of last season, but you could see towards the end when we knew we were safe and stuff, the players just didn't no. really look like they gave a damn anymore. Bella knew he was going. He didn't look like he cared much anymore. Like, you know, I'm not just saying, I loved Bella, by the way, just for the record. I loved Jeremy Bella and what he gave, but I didn't respect it as a wing back too much. I thought he was a bit of a wasted talent back there. Yeah, definitely. No, I completely agree with that. Yeah. Pedersen think... didn't give a crap at the end. Yeah. It's, there's a lot of players actually who sort of started to pack their bags towards the end of that season. So it wasn't all Bowie's fault, but I no, think no, no. some players individually let him down. But again, I think, you know, as a coach, I think Eustace is much better. I think he's got the best out of Troy as well because obviously they're supposedly good mates and, you know, they've worked with each other at Watford before. I think keeping Troy happy is good for the whole club then because him in a good mood gets everybody else in a good mood then. I think and you can see how much that goal meant. Like every player yeah. pretty much on the pitch went for Troy when he scored as if to say, yeah, it's like... Yeah, definitely. Even absolutely. Hogan, who Hogan looks like the kind of man that if he doesn't score, he looks fuming for the whole week. But even Hogan was buzzing. like He was like, yes. Yeah, it's a good moment. I think for the team as well, you know, when you've got, you, we, we're obviously a bit of a struggling club with off the pitch, obviously with finance and just general ownership, really. So with when it comes to those times when we do get a good equaliser against a good team, you know, for everybody in the team, it must feel really good, you know, and, and particularly for who scored it and the, you know, the situation you're in and how hard you have to battle to win that point, you know, it was good. It was, it was a great moment. You can't deny it. And, with the fans as well, like the whole end just absolutely collapsed. Like everybody I around me was it. sort of lying down. It's like it's like one minute we're all stood up and it's like a blinked and everybody's lying down. It's like what's going on? <laughs> <laughs> it was amazing. Well, yeah, I sat it with that great result, great performance. Um, your honest feeling about Middlesbrough? Then, like we said, Chris Wilder gone. <laughs> Are they for the taking? A hundred percent. Does that favour us? No, we're Birmingham City and we hate that. <laughs> you know, we're we're gonna be the team expected to go there and win and nobody likes that. I mean, I don't like it, but I am confident because getting the points off Sheffield United and getting all those results against the good teams in the league. I think we can go on and make a bit of a a bit of a run really with this, but it is the blues after all, so and this oh, month's difficult. We've got seven games, man. I know that that's probably the toughest game maybe we've had out the way. Good point. Mm. But we had a little discussion before obviously starting this pod, you know, with the size of our squad, you know, people like Billick who are very injury prone. He's class, but he, you don't want to risk him. Three games in seven days. Do you rotate a little bit coming into Middlesbrough? I don't mm. know. Yeah, I don't you know whether... 60. 
Yeah, because I'm thinking about this now. It's like with Hannibal, obviously, when he came on against Sheffield United, he obviously put a lot of effort in and he started to push us on a little bit more as we um, as the game sort of got to the end. Um, but I do think if we start him, will he keep that? Um, will he keep that going for the whole ninety, or will he have to get taken off for Bielik? Or you know, it's it's, it's interesting to think about. Um, but I, I do feel like we should keep the same team because obviously consistency is great when it comes to teams doing well. I think I remember with Gary Monk, it was just the same team every single week. He knew exactly who was starting. He knew the did it in the as well, but it worked. Yeah. That was the season we finished ninth. Do you know what I mean? I think he started the exactly, season, yeah. same 11 for like 15 straight, but it worked. You were exactly, yeah. That, and that's how you make good teams. You know, when you recall good teams of the past, you recall the elite teams of the past. You know, everybody knows the Barca. 2011 squad because yeah. that they just played the same team every single se- every single week you know you know and that's why they won everything because they were just the team that were the best team that season so why would you want to change it so if we are if this is our best team that we've got this season play them you know and and although it would be good to play Job and it might be good to play Hannibal from like a full ninety or whatever but what if we lose it then and then. What happens then if we lose to Bristol City after we put Bielit back in? You know, there's there's too much that we could ruin for the good form, really. So I feel like we should keep the same team and we should jo- just go and try and win, really, because obviously we're coming off the back of winning against, uh, drawing with Sheffield United, which is a good point to get. So go into the game against Borough and feel like you should win it. You know, that's the, that's the mentality we should have, really, because we won there last season. And then that was in the middle of that good run as well. So I feel like we should do the same again, you know, and they're in a pretty bad state. But obviously, obviously, with this being the Blues, we'll probably go over there and lose 3 now, which is. I'm just looking up the table like. now, sorry, because we were talking about results. Mm. And like, it's it's tight still, do you know what I mean? Like, we're, don't get me wrong, it's lovely being 15, but we're in three, <laughs> three points off Middlesbrough, who are in mm. the relegation zone. You lose to that, you know, we're in a bit of trouble. However, you win that game, you beat Bristol, you pick up another six points, knocks up to 19. Currently, Burnley are 18 points and in fourth. Like, it's such a tight... So like you said, one or two results, and we're either saying, brilliant, amazing, mm. or we're going, oh, shit, <laughs> here we go again. Yeah, I don't know what the season's going to be like now, because I've had such an up and down with it already this season. So it's like, is this going to be one where we do really well? Or is it going to be one where we're like back to normal blues sort of ways, really, with it all being back to finishing 19th or whatever stupid thing we always seem to do? I'm just it's super a- hopeful. I'm trying to be hopeful. I'm trying. I'm also hoping that we don't pick up what I now call what for the lightest. And if we start going on a bad run, we can't get rid of Eustace. Mm. Like, I like him. I like, like, do you know what I mean? Like, our board have been known for just fobbing off your manager or two, do you know what I mean, with a bad spell. Although mm. they waited about 10 games too long with uh, Karanka. Yeah, no, absolutely, yeah. I don't think that Eustace will have that same effect, though. I feel like he's a good enough coach to sort of turn things around if things do get bad. I think with players being on his side as well, I feel like they would be willing to give him a better try as well. I don't know what it was with Bowie. Maybe it was just a bit too demanding, maybe, or whatever. I don't know. I, I, I can't tell into those things. But With, with Eustace, sorry, I'll just cut you clean up there, I'm sorry. Uh, with Eustace, <laughs> it's fine. it looks like he's given the players a bit of freedom, whereas yeah. with Bowie, it looked very much like, a, this is your job, this is what you're doing, and you're doing it like that. Whereas mm. with Eustace, it looks like he's gone, well, this is the formation, however, you've got a bit of freedom, go about do that, Troy, you do what you want. Scott fucks in the box it. The mm. Pooner's basically got the free roll from what I can see. Chung has that bit of freedom to run about when he wants. And Felix just there to clean up the job. Yeah, I think, well, you know, it's it's like with certain players, they do, and I, I don't mean this in a, you know, as an attack or anything, but with players like Deeney, you know, he probably does want a bit of freedom, you know, and he probably doesn't want to be told everything every five minutes because obviously he's played in yeah. the Premier League. He's had a manager like Sean Dyche who has had to get in there in the first place to achieve those things and actually starting to get a bit of a kick up the arse to actually go and properly, you know, mm. perform properly. And uh, as he comes into the end of his career, he probably does want a manager like John Eustace to sort of be like, you know, just take it easier and sort of go about going your career towards the end of the season, you know, as the 
playing for the team that you love and you know just giving them that bit of freedom so we have another hardcore manager like Boya it probably was difficult for them to get along because Troy's probably one in a nicer manager and Boya is obviously having to make his career off uh, trying to make his career from us so it's it, it probably it was never going to work really and yeah. I, I, I wonder whether Boya did want Dini in the whole uh, transfer window anyway I think it was um, more of a Gary move, if I'm honest. I think Gary Garden kind of. No, Craig Garden. Yeah, Craig, Craig, yeah. Not Gary. Yeah. <laughs> but, 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 no, Craig, I think Craig just kind of. Every, the fans wanted it. He's been Everyone's been screaming to have him for a few years now. And I think mm. it was just time fell right for it. But let's move on from Bowie, yeah, because I'm just getting more frustrated the more I think about how much. You know, I just I'll keep getting chucked in EK's face like, in my mind <laughs> and I can't deal with it. <laughs> oh, um, God. oh shucks what a man um, I do think Bora for the taking if I'm honest I think we shouldn't concede to a team with no manager I think we're solid enough to hold them off I think maybe a nice 2-0 3-0 win I think Scott might get one mm. you know I'd like to see Scott get a goal again like two games obviously without a goal is not a bad drought but I think that was like if he doesn't score for about 4 or 5 I think his confidence might get a bit shot yeah, and his confidence is a massive thing as well. You know, if he does a star scoring, then he, he could... Yeah, it's, it's one of those runs that you could go on, you know, if like he doesn't score for the next five games, then we're thinking, God, he's back to his old ways, isn't he? Yeah. But I think if he gets a goal, even if we don't win, then that's good for us because it's, you know, it's another goal for him and the confidence player that he is. Because if you don't win against Borough, then he'll at least have a goal and then he will go on to that Bristol City game and then we'll probably look a bit more confident then. But I think we should go into both games and get six points from them, really, because even though it's a bit of a, even though it's a bit of a, not a slightly egotistical thing to think about, really. But you know, we've just got a point against Sheffield United. We're going against Borough, who've not got a manager, like you say, and also Bristol City, who aren't in the best form. We've got two very good strikers who are in the round the box, good goal scorers. We've got a great midfield, very creative players, and we're very solid mm-hmm. at the back at the moment. You know, we should be thinking a little bit confidently, but again, it's always blues, isn't it? So we'll, we'll, go, we'll probably come away with no points. <laughs> or one, and we scraped a 1-1 one, one in the 93rd minute against Bristol. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I just hope that, you know, I, I, I do hope that we get six points from them because it, it's, it's oh, I'm going to annoy myself now, I'm going around in circles. We should, we should win, that's the thing, but yeah, it's just, I suppose it's just the waiting now, which is kind of annoying because like, I just want to get the two games done and get the two wins on the board because then we're looking really good then. As long as we just finish above 17th this season, that's all I'm happy with. But <laughs> I, I think if we can go into the World Cup, like that nice little bit of international break, which no one wants, but it's going to happen, mm. so we've got to just deal with it. Um, top 12, top 10, you know, anything's mm. possible. I'm not saying for one second we're going to push the playoffs. Do not. Anyone miss here what I'm saying? Would I love that? Oh, God, I would. But, you know, any improvement from last season would be great. Yeah, massively, yeah. Uh, I don't I, think that... I found yeah, the top half. Yeah, I don't think we'll get top half uh, as such. But I think... I don't, I don't know, really. I think 15th from where we are at the moment, for where we've been in the past few seasons and just how bad we are off the pitch. You know, we're terribly run at the moment. You know, we don't know what on earth is going on with the club which is just like all the takeover deals gone quiet again and, yeah, and waiting on EFL approval apparently which you know yeah. they're, soon, they're soon enough to let Carson Young and these that take over the club like that but oh god when you want to mm. get rid of them they're doing like a 19 year investigation on everything now so it's like oh, yeah it's 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 a pain really and it's because it's they don't want to get anything wrong and they've obviously got stuff wrong with that sort of shit before so it's like I, I think that I think what they've found I think they've found stuff not saying you know what I mean like, I think they've probably mm. found something dodge with these owners and gone we've we've dropped a bit of a bit of a ball bag early you know like, yeah <laughs> like, oh, oh what do we do here like what yeah it is what it is and I am confident like you are I'm hopeful for six points you know by the end of this week it'd be great It'd be great. Yeah, you know, I'd like to see Jordan James maybe get a little bit more game time. I know he's resting after mm. the international break, you know. And obviously, we all stand with Bakuna with what's going on at the minute. 
Obviously, have you seen all that going on? With the yeah, I've seen bits of it. Yeah, I have, yeah. It's disgusting. But, yeah. you know, hopefully he's got a strong, strong head on his shoulders and he takes it in stride. He scores an absolute world to get Middlesbrough and, you know, he dabs on Yeah, it'd be nice for him to score, actually. He hasn't scored this season yet, has he? No, he scored a lovely goal pre season against that Spanish team. I remember that. Yeah, that was great. That was right in front of us, actually, that one was. Mm. Yeah. He's, he's got uh, all the ability. He's got all the ability, you know. So mm. we're hopeful. We're hopeful six points this week and we'll review next week and either be crying together or laughing. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. Yeah. yeah, I think that's all I wanted to talk about. You got anything else you wanna go through? Are you happy with everything? Well, I just want to point out that there will be no vlog on Wednesday nights because I can't unfortunately I can't make it to that one. Uh because Whoever made the fixtures has made it ludicrous to put it on a Wednesday night in Middlesbrough. So uh, they thank love you. It, don't they? They I don't love, understand this. I absolutely love putting us like far away on a Tuesday or Wednesday. We it's are crazy. Think, how, how many times have we got Millwall away on a Tuesday night as well now? <laughs> I don't think we've got them this season, but it, it, I've they've just, got they've I, come into us. That's why they've got us on a Tuesday night. I think next month or the end of this yeah, month. Yeah, one of those things. Yeah, but there's it was Bournemouth and Borough last season on a. So I think it was Sunday, but it was like a twelve o'clock kickoff, and they had a right go at all that. They were like banners out and protesting about it all. So it's like, if they're still doing it, why? It's just a pain. Like, I, I honestly, I feel like I, I can't remember if I put a tweet out about it or anything, but I, I feel like I remember saying that um, uh, games like that, where if you're playing Norwich or whatever, it, you can't play them on like a Tuesday night or a twelve o'clock kickoff, but only if you play them. If they're a team close to you, you know, if you're Coventry and you're playing Borough on a Tuesday night, that's not allowed. But if you're Newcastle playing Middlesbrough, then you oh. could kind of do that, you know what I mean? But when it comes to like teams that are playing like North versus South and playing them on a Tuesday night or on a 12 o'clock kickoff, you know, just fuck off. That's just annoying. Yeah. Place. <laughs> like, don't take the piss of us. Like, yeah. I mean, we all have jobs. You know? I mean, we all have stuff to do in life. The last thing you want is getting back. Like you've said, you've done it before at two in the morning, and then absolutely yeah. in the morning, and you're like, "Come on!" Like, it's not just it's not just the money that you pay for the tickets as well, which are ridiculously high anyway. But it's yeah. the petrol prices, it's the food that you get on the go as well. You know, it comes to about hundred quid every single fucking game. So like playing that on a Tuesday night, so you get back at like I said, at two o'clock in the morning, like when we did from. Bournemouth last season and we lost as well which I might just add on to that one <laughs> so you're even so more pissed off like you're yeah. Like, oh, great, like, yeah it's ridiculous they should uh, they should stop it it's well there's, there's a lot of things that should be banned in football really but you know that's just that's just one of the many of them <laughs> <laughs> definitely definitely but yeah so no vlog on Wednesday you know but um, you'll be back Saturday yeah, it's a home game. We'll be back and uh, hopefully we'll uh, have a six pointer at the end of that one. So uh, that we should, it should be good times. But uh, if it's going to be a nil, uh, no points, then um, <laughs> look forward to that podcast afterwards. <laughs> yeah, uh, like I've tried to be quite conservative and not really swear too much. However, we've got a bad run result. You'll soon see the other side. <laughs> we'll, soon, we'll, soon, we'll soon see. Um, yeah. But yeah, so that's everything from us. How would you want to do the okay. can do yeah um thank you for watching this episode of the podcast um once again if you're new to the channel be sure to uh subscribe and like this video uh and be sure if you are checking this out on spotify i think you follow us and maybe like the playlist i don't know if not you, you, use you click the bell. spotify yeah i think so yeah i can't quite know um uh Apologies if I'm a bit croaky as well throughout this podcast. I am a bit ill at the moment, as um, you might have seen at the beginning of my vlog. I've had a bit of a cold, um, but uh, it didn't stop me from going to the game on Saturday. Um, but yeah, it was all good. Um, and of course, uh, you keep li there'll be links to all of our uh, socials in the description uh, down below. So if you want to go and check those out as well, they'll all be down there to uh, go and check out. Um if you've got any comments or anything that you want to add to what we've been talking about on the podcast this evening, uh, be sure to get them down in the comment section down below. Uh, we'll be, we're very active in the comment section, so we'll always be there to uh, engage and have a chat about things, what's going on. You know, if you've agreed with what we said, if you disagree with what we said, be sure to leave it down below. We'll always be there uh, to have a chat. And yeah, that's about it.
from all of us, from me and Jay. And uh, yeah, keep your eye on. Keep your eye on.